Hello everyone, I am Dr. Abhishek Kumar Mishra. I am a senior orthopedic surgeon and a consultant orthopedic surgeon at various hospitals. I am a co-founder of VNA Hospital in South Delhi and I am also a director of orthopedics at Apollo Spectra Hospitals in Delhi. So if you have pain in the shoulder, you have difficulty in moving the shoulder, if you have difficulty in lifting up the shoulder, if you have difficulty in taking it back, in short, if you have difficulty in performing activities of uh, daily life, and if you are unable to sleep at night properly due to pain in the shoulder, then you must listen to this topic because today I'm going to talk about a very, very common condition which is widely prevalent. It's called frozen shoulder. You must have heard about it, I think. So frozen shoulder, as we all know, the name we all of us have heard. It's also called periarthritis or adhesive capsulitis. The name itself is explanatory. Adhesive capsulitis. Basically, this is the shoulder joint, right? This is the ball of the shoulder joint. This is the socket of the shoulder joint. So to give it a stability, to give it depth, uh, God has provided us with a capsule around the joint. And if the capsule, if the wall of the capsule becomes thickened, if it gets sticky, then we have this condition called periarthritis or adhesive capsulitis. Patients generally have difficulty in lifting up the uh, sh shoulder beyond a certain degree and also they have a difficulty in bringing back the shoulder. So when we examine the patient, we check the movement of the patient and we see whether the patient has difficulties in certain movements or not. Sometimes what the patient does, does, the patient does trick movements. Basically, instead of lifting up the shoulder, the patient moves up the shoulder blade. And we tell the patient to lift the shoulder and instead of lifting it up, lifting it up like this, what the patient does is lifts the shoulder blade and thus tries to lift the arm. So if any of these is happening, you might be having this condition called frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis or periarthritis. In this condition, patients generally have difficulty in moving the shoulder. Movements get restricted beyond a certain degree, especially lifting up the arm. So after some time, the patient finds it painful and difficult to lift the arm beyond a certain range of motion. Also, the patients have difficulty in bringing back the shoulder, bringing back the forearm like this and touching the center of the back, which is normal, which happens normally in a patient who doesn't, in a person who doesn't have this condition. So sometimes what the patient does, patient does trick movements. Suppose we tell the patient to lift up the arm and show, instead of lifting up the arm like this, patient lifts up the shoulder blade or a scapula and bends on one side just to show that there is movement or just to uh, confirm to himself or herself that there is movement of the shoulder. So this condition called periarthritis or adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder results in movement and stiffness which might be disabling. So this frozen shoulder can happen to anyone or anybody, but generally it is common after 40. Usually it doesn't affect people who are less than 40. It can happen on one side, it can happen on both the sides at the same time also. And it can happen to anyone, but people who have diabetes, who have thyroid issues, who have heart conditions, they are more prone to get this condition called frozen shoulder or periarthritis. So frozen shoulder usually starts with pain in the shoulder, which might be mild to begin with, but generally the pain becomes severe over a period of time. And this condition called frozen shoulder, the natural history says that once it starts, it might take anywhere from six months, nine months, two up to three, four years to resolve. So first stage is the freezing stage, when the patient primarily has pain and slight restriction of movement. And this freezing stage can develop into frozen state, in which the patient has mostly difficulty in movement but the pain becomes bearable or much less than before and the last stage is also called thawing stage in which basically just like the ice melts the disease starts gradually disappearing the movements they tend to come back and the pain gradually becomes almost negligible the movements they usually come back to a great extent except the last range of motion the terminal range of motion which might or might not come back after once you have had this episode of frozen shoulder so if you think you have liked the video so far this short video then please subscribe to our channel by clicking on the link below the initial treatment or the first line treatment of frozen shoulder is usually 
physiotherapy supplemented by certain medication like anti-inflammatories and we have to ensure that whatever movements are left we try to conserve that further stiffness does not develop and also we try to control the pain by giving anti-inflammatories so the need for physiotherapy and anti-inflammatories might be prolonged in this condition because this condition usually stays for a very long time if the patient does not respond to physiotherapy and anti-inflammatories the second step what we suggest is we can try steroid injections or sometimes PRP injections which usually help the patient. So patient might receive just one injection or sometimes we give like more than one injections at a certain interval depending on the improvement in the condition of the patient. Sometimes rarely if the condition is very very severe, it is too disabling, it, it is needing too much painkillers and the patient is not able to sleep at night, the patient's sleep is completely disturbed and patient is not able to perform the activities of daily life to the, such an extent that the patient has difficulty in attending to his daily chores or his occupation, then we might suggest an arthroscopic or laser surgery to the patient which is called arthroscopic capsular release which is usually very effective and it reduces the natural history of the disease to just a few weeks so patient starts recovering immediately after surgery and usually within six to eight weeks patient regains the entire range of motion and the pain goes away so this surgery called arthroscopic or laser surgery the arthroscopic capsular release or arthroscopic treatment of frozen shoulder is generally reserved for those patients who have severe condition or who have severe pain and stiffness. During the initial stages, the physiotherapist tells you certain uh, exercises which are not too strenuous for the shoulder but at the same time they try to retain they try to conserve the range of motion of the shoulder you can do like these exercises like you can go on the wall like this just try to increase the range of motion you can use shoulder wheels like which are uh, very uh, commonly available at a physiotherapy center or you can try pulleys or you can do gentle range of motion exercise at the shoulder the idea is not to do very strenuous exercises and exercises with weights are not recommended in frozen shoulder because they might further aggravate the pain. A patient who has frozen shoulder usually uh, faces some difficulty in uh, getting sleep like either the patient is unable to go to sleep because of pain or sometimes he might wake up he or she might wake up in the middle of sleep because of the pain developing the shoulder so generally people ask like what is the best position to sleep in when i have a frozen shoulder generally patient finds it difficult um, to sleep on the same side but sleeping on the other side is usually easier for the patient so whatever position you find comfortable yourself comfortable in like you can sleep on the other shoulder you can sleep just like this like supine or whatever position you can feel comfortable you feel comfortable in that is the best Best position to sleep in frozen shoulder. So many people, many patients, they ask what are the do's and don'ts in frozen shoulder. So do's you can do everything within the limits of pain. So in fact you should try to continue with the activities of daily life so that the further stiffness does not happen. But then again you should try to avoid pain triggers. Certain those activities which are causing increase in pain or like lifting of heavy weights they might worsen the condition they might make it stretch or linger for a longer time and that's why basically you need to listen to your body if you can do something easily or with relative ease or with minimal pain or discomfort you should continue doing that don't stop all your movement because immobilization or a still shoulder a shoulder which does not move further propagates this condition so you should try to make the movements to the extent which is being accepted by the body at the same time you should not do something which is very strenuous for the shoulder and gradually usually this condition recovers if your condition is very bad opt for surgery you will get a very fast relief if your condition is not so bad you can continue conservatively without surgery with some medication and physiotherapy or at the most certain injections and you will certainly recover so my message at the end of the video is if you have any of these conditions like any of these symptoms which i described initially in the video please do consult your orthopedic surgeon thank you very much